Rugby wrap-up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump. And Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Rugby Odds, starring former WWE champion John Bradshaw Layfield, God's gift to rugby, gift a Belu of the Gift Time Rugby Network, and featured guest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're, you're too kind. I, thank you. No, that's it. That's, thank you. What? Yeah, it's well-deserved, yes, yes, but we don't have time. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, let's get to the show, and the show is this. I do all the work while John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE legend, a.k.a. Johnny Spoons in rugby circles, and Gift Day Beilu, rugby's gift to mankind, and now just going as the king. They're in the green room. They do basically nothing, and they do less when I bring them in on the show, actually, but let's not nitpick. Let's get to the show. Let's look back before we look forward. In a key Eastern Conference clash, the Atlanta Rattlers slithered into Quincy, Massachusetts to face the Free Jacks. In a match that was evenly contested, statistically speaking, New England had all they could handle from Rugby ATL. And yet it was the team with the most yellow cards that stood out as the victors before a very happy and rowdy home crowd. New England wins 15-10, but does not cover the seven-point spread. The Toronto Arrows hosted the Dallas Jackals, and any time your backup fly half has 17 points and your backup prop has 10 points, the other team is in for a long day. Five different Arrows hit their targets in the try zone, and the Dallas Jackals once again went home with their tails between their legs. Toronto covers the 30-point spread, winning 57 to zip. The Houston Sabercats welcomed in the Utah Warriors, and these cats proved they can land on their feet despite 13 penalties and two yellow cards. Maybe it was too much catnip, but Utah played some good rugby, making Brady Cats out of some of the hometown fans. But it was Houston that clawed their way to a much needed 31-27 victory, and Houston did not cover the five point spread in the process, which made some of us very angry. In what many called a grudge match, Nola hosted Old Glory DC, marking the return of former head coach Nate Osborne. With his former assistant coach Kane Thompson now working with some job security, there was no shortage of incentive. But the depleted DC squad was forced to make 225 tackles in a tough loss. Nola wins this one 50 to 21 and covers the four point spread. In Hoboken, New Jersey, just one mile from Midtown Manhattan, Rugby New York and the Seattle Seawolves engaged in an instant classic. The final statistics would lead one to think New York dominated the score, but that wasn't the case as the Seawolves just kept coming. Despite New York dominating at the breakdown in scrums, in lineouts, and ball carries, and forcing Seattle into 157 tackles, this game's outcome only came when the goalposts were knocked down. New York holds on 30 to 22 and covers the four point spread. Finally, the Southern Cal clash between the San Diego Legion, who are desperate, and the Giltinis, who are on a roll ended up with the San Diego Legion winning. Indeed, the Legion tipped the table and knocked over those Giltini glasses and kept their playoff hopes alive. San Diego on top 31-27, and LA does not cover the three-point spread. Phew, I am gassed. Let's take a quick break and then bring in John Bradshaw Layfield and Gift A. Bailey. Looking for your next vehicle? With Sheehy's Easy Search, choose from over 3,000 new and used vehicles. Shop, trade, or buy online or in store. We make it easy with our award winning service. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. Okay, we're back with Gift A. Bailu, Rugby's Gift 
to mankind and known as King A. Bailu, and of course, WWE legend John Bradshaw, Johnny Spoons, Layfield. And guys, because we each went three for three last week, John gets the wooden spoon. I don't get the wooden spoon, dummy. And guess, and guess what I did? I decided to do a little research on you, okay? So I looked up your old high school yearbook, all right? I found a picture of you. Oh, yeah. There is you right there. Right there. Look at that. I found your old high school picture right there. That's you right there. You looked exactly the same with your missing eyebrow. It's uncanny. There you are, Matt McCarthy. You, you, who are you, John Bradshaw Layfield? You just continue to surprise. How did you get that St. Joseph's West New York yearbook? Because I called St. Joseph's. I said, you know Matt McCarthy? They go, yeah, we're, we hope he's dead. And there's really? the phone, by the way. Really? <laughs> That's them calling back. St. Joseph's that. calling back. Yeah, and, but it's odd because they closed seven years ago. Well, they reopened and call. They got a phone. All righty, first one well, up. Didn't talk turtle without your eyebrows. Toronto, hosting New England, and it's New England. The Flapjacks, Free Jackals, or Tea Sippers minus seven on the road, John. I don't know who I'm going to choose. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my brand new Free Jackal jersey. <laughs> That's right. Look at that. Look at that. But John, I got a Free Jackal jersey. Is this a game? So who do you the, think I'm going to go with? Uh, it's I'm seven going. points, John. It's a lot. They might be resting, guys. They you know lost. What? They've lost one game this year, 19 to 15, in the Coliseum, first game of the year, and they've run off double digit victories since. You think I'm going against the Free Jackals? You're insane. Well, I do. I do try to do rugby for a living, so yes, I am insane. Gift. Look, Free Jacks. Even though they're already basically playoff lock inside there, I think that they want to make a point. Even if they're trying to uh, rest players, they got great players behind them. I'm going to give it to New England because you know, I don't really ever trust Toronto. So <laughs> It's a lot of points, guys. It's a lot of points. Now, don't and- copy us like you did last week. The reason we're all three and three is because get the king, King Ibelu and I were picking good picks, and you were just copying us. He's jumping on the train. Yep. <laughs> Old bandwagon jumper. Bandwagon Matty, they call me. And you know what? I'm going to jump off that bandwagon. And I'm going to take an arrow out of my quiver, and I'm going to shoot you right in the nuts. And then I'm going to go with the Flapjacks. The you Flapjacks can't. are going to cover that seven points. Next one up. You threatened to shoot me in the nuts with an arrow? <laughs> I never said that. I never that said that. This is so childish. Old Glory, D.C., hosting. The Houston Sabercats. The Sabercats right in the thick of that playoff race, John. And it's the Sabercats on the road, minus seven. Our second consecutive road favorite by seven. I was right last week. The ass whooping factory sent down a whole bunch of ass whooping cans. The problem was <laughs> Nate Osborne missed them mm-hmm. and Nala got them. So they were there. It just the wrong team opened them. If you're Nate Osborne and DC fan, I think they, they, they're going to play very well this week, but I think Houston is on a mission behind Danny Barrett. And I think Houston is going to come in to Sagra field and roll them boys. All right. So he's picking Texas gift. Who you picking? Give a lot of credit to Nate. You know, you went down to new Orleans and I said, there was going to be a game of the power of petty, um, but clearly the power of petty was on new Orleans side uh, and on a strong way. Uh, far levels of pay. You can never underestimate, and I tried not to underestimate the power of Petty from New Orleans. Ah, God, you got to love it. It's it's a <laughs> thing. But in this situation, look, Houston's trying to get into their playoffs, man. They're not trying to have anything go. And I think this will be the first time that they've gotten into the playoffs since they've been uh, coming to inception four years ago. So uh, look at Houston to not take this game with any lightness. Uh, you know, Old Glory's had a great run especially considering the situation. Nate should probably definitely get his job back and be signed to a longer-term contract going into next year. But Houston is about to go and get this game uh, in, in, in enough ways to make sure that they can have points to separate themselves and if be able to jump, separate themselves from San Diego and possibly jump L.A. All right. If, if Old Glory had at least a third of the guys that are either missing or suspended, they'd be an entirely different team. But you get your right, Houston, under it. Hanukkah Meyer is our firing, and I think they're going to cover this seven. I hate to say it, but, you know, we got to think with our heads and not our hearts because my heart 
is with all glory and my Sheehy Auto Stores Volkswagen Taos 2020. And Nate Osborne. And no longer Nola Nate Osborne. And then we've got another <laughs> road favorite, this time by three, and it's Santiago going into, into Nola, and they had a season-saving win against the Giltinis, John. <laughs> you know, your editor makes you look like you almost speak English, okay? I want to I want to make that clear. How good <laughs> is Joe Peterson? At one point, he yeah. had the only try. He had the conversion. He had three kicks. He had all their points. That guy is a stud. In San Diego, they played poorly the week before. They showed up against L.A. This, to me, is a perfect letdown spot for them, but it's also a perfect letdown spot for Nala because they come out playing a rival and win big. I'm going with Joe Peterson and San Diego to go into the gold mine, Maria Laveau, and roll them boys. Whoa, whoa, gift. You can't, you're going to pick against New Orleans again? Gift, and Look. consider – that they have played exceptionally good rugby since Kane Thompson's two-year extension was announced. There's two things that I can always guarantee. One, the power of petty. Two, that Toronto or Canada will always end up letting us down in some way, shape, or form. And three, that San Diego will probably end us letting us down in the back half. Look, good credit to them. L.A. was a great win on them. They absolutely brothered them and went the opposite. I feel like their power of petty against my words allowed them to get the rise. So I take credit for their win. Yes. I want the fire. I want the smoke, but in this situation, they're moving forward in time. They're going to be up later than they expected. Boom. And also new Orleans. I think they're going to use that same energy to at least keep this game within a close measure. I look for new Orleans to actually take this game, get this win and use this. Whoa. next season whoa he is back on the gold <laughs> bandwagon and i i uh, i can't disagree with you more gift oh boy <laughs> that is one dopey pick no offense that is what, one of the what? it's only dopey until it's correct guy <laughs> guy san diego's playing for this this their playoff lives and they're back in it because seattle despite playing an unbelievable match in new york came up with no points so now, now San Diego is right in there again. So this is going down to the wire for that third, that third playoff spot in the West. San Diego is going to cover the points against Nala. So you copied me. John, if you had the Dallas Jackals and 56 points, you lost last week because Toronto beat them 57 to zero. Now they have the task of facing the Los Angeles Giltinis, who lost to San Diego, their Southern Cal rival. Now it's 38 points that Dallas is getting, and that's probably a conservative guess. Conservative? That's conservative. The, the only chance Dallas has is if the Giltinis miss their flight. 38 points might be the first half spread. That's about all. L.A. is literally going to score as many points as they want to score. This could be a 100-point game. Gift? I think John's <laughs> taking L.A. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to do an analysis on this. Look, look, L.A. wins. L L.A. wins. L.A. will probably pull the similar score that the All Blacks played on USA Rugby. It's, it's probably in the same guys. It, this might be one of the highest scoring games in rugby history, ah, now nah, I won't go up to 200, but it will get into that range. If you give Meeks the ball by himself against 15 of Dallas Jackals, he'll still score four times. It's a pretty good player. Pretty good player. Uh, you know what, guys? I think Dallas has two chances to win this one. Two chances. Slim and none, and Slim's on the golf course. Dallas is going to get destroyed by L.A., who has to score a lot of points just to make sure that – tiebreaker thing at the end of the season that John loves and bonus point thing that John loves isn't convoluted and they get their slot. John, the Utah Warriors, the mountain people are, are welcoming your Texans, your Austin Gilgronies, and it's the Gilgronies, easy for me to say, on the road, minus nine, another road favorite. God bless Texas. And then boys went into the Coliseum. They had a heck of a game, could have tied it at the end. This is not going to be close. Good gronies are going to come out smoking up in the mountains. They're going to be smoking like Giff was down in Panama. <laughs> All conjecture that's alleged. We don't want alleged, anyone alleged in Panama. Alleged smoking <laughs> in Panama. Are they going to roll them, boys? 
they're going to roll them boys. They're going to roll <laughs> them boys. They're going to roll them boys all over the mountain. They're going to roll them up the mountain. They're going to roll them down the mountain. They're going to roll them all yeah. around the mountain. Yeah. They're going to roll them boys. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Woo-hoo, Texas. Texas. Roll them boys. Gift, do the mountain people have a chance? Man, you got to give credit to the Utah. Uh, they did a great job against Atlanta, showing their might, showing everything that they had. Unfortunately, this is now an actual competition, and they actually want to win. Austin's about to go and just mine through those mountains. Just just absolutely flatten it back down to Austin Lance style. It might turn Utah into a swamp. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know what I think is going to happen, guys? You're going to choose New York? <laughs> you, think, you think when Utah plays Austin, New York's going to win. That's what you think. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, guys. Make jokes. Go ahead. That's all fun and games until you lose people's money. And I'm all about winning people's money. I don't take it lightly. And I think Utah doesn't take this game lightly. And you guys are shameful for putting them down the way you do. And I think Utah plays well enough to stay within that nine <laughs> points. How about Ooh, that? Yeah, bad language. Bad language. <laughs> and then we've got arguably the game of the weekend. New York hosting Atlanta. And it's New York at home in Hoboken, the home of Frank Sinatra, minus three against the Rattlers. Hyde was amazing last week. And what a game of rugby it was with Seattle. That was fantastic to watch. The commentary was a little bit to be desired, but the game was absolutely fantastic. I think New York has hit their right. By the way, they're nine and four, the same as the Giltinis. They are playing incredibly well. I think New York beats them boys from Atlanta. Hot Atlanta is going to come up there in the Battle of Atlanta. Is going to be lost by them boys. They're going to get rolled. Yeah, and it's five points in the bonus column, Gift. John loves that. Five points, New York on top. Dumbest thing in the world, these stupid bonus points and these stupid rules they call laws. The dumbest thing ever there. You win or you lose. That's, it's that simple. There's USA Rugby World Cup. Honoree John Bradshaw Layfield as a spokesperson for Rugby in America. Gift. <laughs> this is a game for positioning in the playoffs. This is only about positioning in the playoffs. Atlanta has been ultimately disappointing in trying to maintain their position as a team that can keep up. Had a strong start to the season and been tailing off all year. New York seems to have been like finding their consistent range. Good win against Seattle. But this is where the difference comes in. We're going to be seeing Atlanta trying to actually do that final push. All right. I believe in the final push. Atlanta's going to end up coming up to Hoboken. I actually see them taking over on the point over New York, getting the win on this one. At least, yeah. Or at least, wow. no, I say getting the win. Getting the win in Hoboken on that open field. Atlanta taking this one on a shocker. Not going to be getting more points, but they're going to get a shocker on New York and put some tightness into next, the week Whoa. after next game. Whoa. Wow. So so you are you suggesting that Atlanta, the Rattlers on the road, are going to beat New York at home? I am. Wow. Or at least we'll oh. get the points at minimum. But oh. I'm going for the win. That's Lord, the doctor. dumbest follow-up question I've oh. ever heard. He just told you that Atlanta was going to lose in New York. You go, oh, so you're suggesting that Atlanta's going to lose in New York. He <laughs> just said that. That's the dumbest follow-up I've ever heard in my life. And you, I know that you, you, the circles that you run in, you've heard some really, really dumb things in your lifetime. No offense. Well, what I'm about to hear is even dumber because you're going to try to come out with some type of rationale that you might not pick New York. You pick no. New York every single week. No. You always pick New York. You will never pick anybody else. You'll pick New York in a game New York's not even in. Okay? <laughs> so go ahead. Pick New York. Go ahead. Pick New York. Go you ahead. know what I'm going to do, guys? Go ahead, Stephen Lewis lover. I'm picking New York because New York is the better team and they're going to win this game in Hoboken. End of the Rattlers. End of the Snakes. Cut the head of the snake off in Hoboken. How you doing? We'll be right back with final thoughts after this. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer.
guys. And just like that, we're out of time again. Wow. Where does the time go when you're having so much fun? John, final thoughts. The question is, how good are the Free Jackals? They've only been beaten one time by four points in the Coliseum. And New York is nine and four, same as the Giltinis. I mean, I think the Giltinis, the Gilgronis are the best two teams in the league, but you got some teams that are right on their heels, and these are going to be some great tests this week, both with the Free Jackals, with Seattle coming in, and with New York, with Atlanta coming in. Some good games of rugby. All right, Giff, final thoughts? Big ups to the U.S. for in nine to 11 years, getting the Rugby World Cup that we may or may not be prepared to handle and to be able to show that we'll be able to do some stuff if we actually do the things we need to do to actually get our teams and everybody ready. But we got it. We got it. Big ups to us. Big ups to us. We're starting. Let's go. You know, piggybacking that gift, we do have the Olympics here in 2028. So that'll get some of these stadiums up to speed and, we have sevens in the Olympics. So we'll have Olympic sevens on the ground here in the United States in 2028. And that's just three years prior to the world cup coming here for the first time. And on that note, we are out of time. I want to thank WWE legend and Johnny spoons, John Bradshaw Layfield and the gift, the King gift, a Baylu rugby's gift to mankind. Thank you for tuning in. Much appreciated. Please check out our other shows, including MLR Weekly, the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Sign up for our newsletter. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And please, please, please sign up for our American Red Cross Blood Donor.